In this video, I'll be going over how to take displacement maps from ZBrush and take it into Maya. So here's ZBrush right here. Here's the model I've made, but you probably don't want to bring in the 1.3 million polygon model, and more than likely want to deal with something lower. Uh, for this mesh, uh, I'll probably take this thing down and rebuild my subdivision. So I'm going to reconstruct subdivision to get that lower level. Wait for a bit, and there we go. This is our lowest mesh. So I'm going to take this mesh and export it. I'm just using the default preferences for the import export. Uh, let's actually go here. Mine aren't default anymore, but these are the default. All four of these should be checked on by default. Um, mainly because in the newer versions of ZBrush, they've already fixed the problem with the whole models flipping and so forth. What happens is when you bring it in, it'll automatically flip it, so you can get out and flip it back. So go to export. Choose OBJ. I choose a destination folder I'd like to take it to. Um, in my case, I'll be going here and going to email head, assets, and I've already exported one earlier. I'll just override it. Yes. The next thing I want to do is take out my displacement map and my normal maps. So in ZBrush 4, just go to UV map, select the size that you want your maps to be. I'm using 2048 for the displacement map. I go to Displacement Map right here. I'm going to click on Smooth UV, and I'm going to click Create and Export. That's one way. The other way is to click Create Displacement Map. I prefer this method. Clone Displacement Map. I'll take it to this side right here. And you want to be able to flip your uh, alpha. So you can go to Alpha, Flip V. Now you have that. Now you can go to Alpha, Export. Now you can export your alpha. You go into textures, and you want to save as a TIFF. I had one exported earlier, but I'll read uh, right over it. The next thing you want to do is get your normal map. Typically, I use a higher res normal map, 496. And I bring this all the way up, and I take it one step down. So this is where you get the detail that you need because the displacement map normally has slight troubles getting this finer detail inside. So with that, click on tangent, put smooth UV on, create normal map. I then clone that normal map. And like before, instead of going to alpha this time, I go to texture. I want to flip my V. And I'm going to export this. So go in here, export, and I'll call this normal map. Save. Now I'm going to Photoshop. I have both these files open. Double check certain things. We go in. Oh, there we go. We have it. I typically like to uh, save out a. Uh, JPEG version of this because sometimes Maya gets finicky and doesn't really like the PSDs or the TIFF format. And from my previous experience, I had to flip my G. So I click on my G channel right here, Control I. This really depends on uh, the settings you already had uh, on your model. So I want to save this as a JPEG. I'll save it over my old normal. Now we have all the files we basically need. So I'm going to switch back. I'm going to take these all the way down. Switch back to Maya. File. I'm going to set your project. I'm going to have Maya set. Go to import. Change it to OBJ. Import my head. It's very important you try to, when dealing with humans or anything dealing with subsurface scatter later on, you also want to make sure the head is as a proper size as possible. Uh, this head was modeled to scale. Um, I like to have my models always on top of the grid though, so I'm going to hold D and V to snap this to the bottom. Hold X, move this to the top. Then modify center pivot to make sure I am indeed in the center. I 
move my pivot right back down to the center of the grid. That frees my transforms. And you want to go to normals, soften edge. I'm going to use a blend first. So I'm going to blend, apply this to my model, and delete unused nodes. Right now I'm going to save. I'll call this email head displace. I'll be switching my renderer to mental ray. And I'll also be turning on color management, a new feature that was inside uh, my 11, and go to quality. And I'm going to use production quality. So if you go to production, and under features, let's check everything, see if everything's okay. Under quality, is everything okay? I'm going to change my filter to Mitchell, change my sample options to jitter, and turn off sample lock. And now I'm going to open my Hyper Shade. I'm going to rename this to Head Shader. Rename this my actual mesh to Female Head Mesh. Now I'm going to click on my shader, click Input Output Connections, and I want to go to my shader group node. Once I get over here, I'm going to go to Blend. The shader group right here. Under displacement map, I'm going to click and load a texture. I go to file. Go to file over here and load up my dis uh, displacement map. More than likely, there'll be a slight problem in the center of the forehead, typically where I cut, created my scene in the beginning. We'll go over there and fix that later. <laughs> go to filter type, off. Default profile, I want this to be linear and static because you want to make sure that your color profile for your displacement map will be set to linear. Let's just see what happens when I render. This is what you'll probably get in the beginning. There's also a little hole I was talking about in the face that's all very bloated. I'm going to turn on my resolution gate this way and zoom up closer to really get the most out of it. So let's scroll down now. And under color balance, so I'm going to change my node, so it's called uh, file email displays. I'm going to right click on alpha offset to create new expression. With the uh, file dis female displays and alpha offset, I'm going to select it around this. Use my middle mouse button to drag and drop under here. I'm going to double click in this area to make sure I get out of this area. Type equals negative 0.5 times file female displays dot alpha gate. The reason why is because my neutral uh, value for displacement maps is gray. Um, and if the color is black, it pushes that down. If the color is white, it pulls that up. In ZBrush, it starts from black and everything just gets lighter. So you just gotta change how this whole thing works so that way it uh, affects everything properly. So click Create. And now let's render it. Uh, it seems like something's not working right. I'm going to store this. Let's try to type a lower value. I'm also noticing some strange uh, stuff going around the mesh itself. It's looking more and more like our actual model. You just have to try to find out that uh, nice value to work with. Whereas the model seems to have point three worked really well. So what I'm going to do next is I want to make sure I subdivide enough for all these changes because we can tell there's something going on in here. So with my model selected, I'm going to go to Window, Rendering Editors, Mental Ray, Approximation Editor, and click Create. I'm going to change my parametric type to Length, this angle. I'm going to subdivide at least twice. And uh, my maximum division for this model is actually 5, so I'm going to go one underneath it. 
turn on phi and then use length on 0 0.001. So now I click render. It's more smooth now. But now we're actually getting less detail on this mesh. So let's go back to our texture, this placement file. Let's bring this value back up now. More than likely the problem we're having was because we did not have enough polygons for it to distribute properly, making it look way stronger than it really was. Seems like one is a bit too high. Okay, I'm liking 0.8. This works nicely for me. But I have this little problem right up here in the area around the neck. Typically these problems are caused because of the edges. So I'm going to go open my file. And it's all these edges down here that's causing those little effects. I'm not too worried about the area down here because I do plan to give her a clothing that goes up to her neck. So if I go up and just zoom up and create a new layer. Use my paintbrush. I'm going to use hold Alt to dab this color. And I'm just going to paint with a soft brush this general area. Not too worried about the detail right there because normal math will help cover that. So after that, I just collapse stack by using Control E and just save it. Then we'll reload my map. Let's store this and I'm going to render again. That has gotten rid of our little problem right there. Now I'm going to apply my neural map above all of this. So I'm going to go in, materials, head shader, butt mapping, load my file, change it to change space, file, load up my female head normal. I'm going to turn on my filter, turn it off, and change this to linear. Hit render again. Seeing the slight differences. I seem like I didn't store the previous image, so I can't really check. If anything, there's probably very small, fine details I've been updated. Other than that, not much, mainly because I didn't really go for very heavy pores or wrinkles. If you did do that, then you would see that inside your um, uh, model. Right, that's how you deal with displacement maps inside of 